I'm Jeff Hirsch, and in this short video, I'm going to tell you a few important things you need to know about the brand new Photoshop version 25, which was just released by Adobe this afternoon. Like everybody else in the industry, I really thought Adobe would wait until their annual Max conference next month to release the next full version of Photoshop. So you can imagine my surprise when I got a notice in my Creative Cloud desktop app today telling me that the official release of Photoshop 25 was available to download and use. Now I've already gotten dozens of emails and text messages asking me all about the new release, so I'm putting together this quick and dirty video to answer the most common questions. Like most of you, I've been playing with the generative fill and generative expand functions as part of the public beta release of Photoshop that's been available to all users since the spring. Back when it first became available to the general public, I did a free two-hour live stream explaining the new features and how to use them. You'll find that on my YouTube channel along with all my other tutorial videos. And if you haven't already seen it, do yourself a favor and follow the link I'm leaving in the comments below and get yourself up to speed on generative fill and how to use it in your photo editing workflow. It's pretty amazing stuff. Since most folks already have some experience using generative fill from the public beta release or have at least seen my explainer video, I won't take up too much time in this one rehashing how to use the tool. Instead, I want to answer a number of important logistical questions and show you a couple of useful tricks and shortcuts you can take advantage of to make the most out of the new tools. First, some background information. Because AI-generated content requires significant computing power, Adobe has updated all of their subscription plans to include a monthly allocation of generative credits which give you priority access to Adobe's computer servers that do the heavy lifting for creating AI-generated content. You'll get a certain number of credits each month depending on which plan you use, anywhere from 50 to 1,000 credits. They've also got a free tier that includes 25 generative credits per month. Each time you do a generative fill or generative expanse, you'll use up a credit. You can find all the information you need to know about generative credits on Adobe's website, and I'll include a link to their FAQ page in the notes below. Most of us are using the Creative Cloud for Photography plan, and as such, we will each get 100 credits per month. They also have credit allotments for those subscribers who are using Education, Team, and Enterprise plans. One bright spot for now Adobe is allowing all paid subscribers unlimited generative credits until November 1st, at which point the normal allocation will kick in. So enjoy your all-you-can-eat buffet of generative fill while you can. A few more details about generative credits. You can check your credit balance in-app or by visiting your Adobe account online. Your credits do not roll over at the end of the month, so use them or lose them. Credits cannot be pooled or shared across multiple users on a team. However, if you have multiple subscriptions, i.e. more than one plan or program, you will be allocated the total combined number each plan offers. And finally, if you use up your monthly allotment, you can still keep doing generative AI, but it may run more slowly for you. You might also receive a daily limit if you use it too often. Additional credits can also be purchased a la carte, 100 credits for $5. That's all of the fine print and legal mumbo jumbo. Now let's get back to the new tools themselves. As I explained in my video back in June, there are two major operations I use Generative Fill for. One is the removal of complex objects from a photo, something I do frequently, and the other is the insertion of new AI-generated objects into a photo, something I do very rarely. 
consult that video for full details on how to best use the tools for each of those tasks. Along with generative fill, Adobe has also given us a new generative expand option for the crop tool that allows you to expand your canvas and fill in the blank areas with AI generated content. This was always possible with just generative fill alone, but it took a couple of extra steps, so Adobe has built it right into the crop tool. After selecting the crop tool out of the toolbox, go to the tool options at the top of the application frame and use the little pull down menu to change the fill option from transparent, which is the default, to generative fill. You also have the option to use content aware fill, which works well in many cases, but isn't quite as magical as the generative fill. And when you expand the canvas, the blank areas will be filled in with generative content. And this brings me to my first important caveat about both generative fill and generative expand. As was the case during the beta test period, the patches you make with the official release of the generative tools is currently limited to 1024 pixels on the longest side. If you try to patch an area larger than that, the patched area will appear lower in resolution because that 1024 pixel square is being stretched out to cover the entire area. So the larger the area you try and cover in one go, the worse the patched areas will look compared to the rest of the image. I know most of us were hoping that the official release would support full resolution generative fill, but it appears the technology just isn't ready yet. Adobe has made it clear that they do still intend to offer that as a future feature. Their website says explicitly, quote, we plan to offer higher resolution images, animation, video, and 3D generative AI features in the future. And they add, the number of generative credits consumed for those features may be greater. And given how computationally intensive these sorts of functions are, this isn't exactly surprising. It will take much more computing horsepower to do these same kinds of generative tricks at higher resolutions. So for now, if you want to do generative fill at full resolution or expand your canvas more than 1024 pixels on a side, you'll need to do it in a series of smaller tiles as was the case during the beta test period. Fortunately, there's now an easier way to execute this piecemeal workaround. Tony Kuiper, the man behind the amazing TK9 extension for Photoshop, has just released a free generative fill panel for use with the latest versions of Photoshop, and I'll include a link to it in the notes below. This handy little panel greatly simplifies the task of tiling together 1024 square pixel blocks to make higher resolution patches. So let's take a quick look at how to use Tony's generative fill panel to simplify this. So instead of using the built-in generative expand, which is limited to a fairly low resolution as we've discussed, we will manually expand the canvas and then fill in the blank areas with a series of 1024 by 1024 pixel tiles, giving us a quote unquote full resolution expansion of the canvas. Note, of course, that after November 1st, you will be using up one credit for each single chunk you replace. So here's an image of a canyon in Iceland I photographed this summer. Let's expand the canvas with just transparent fill, and then using this handy little 1024 button in Tony's panel, we can make selections that are exactly the size of our maximum patch and tile them together to expand the image without losing quality. First, I'll select a slightly overlapping area of my image so the AI has some idea of how to blend it into the existing image, and then I'll click the generative fill without giving it any sort of text prompt. And like always, I'll get three variations of the generated content. 
And because each generative fill operation generates those three separate results, and each one of them takes up some space on disk, Tony's panel also includes buttons for rasterizing layers or flattening the image, which can help keep file sizes down as you eliminate those variations you don't need anymore. I'll speed up the video at this point and work through each of the little sections until I get a finished image. And there you have it. Tony's generative fill panel also offers you an easy way to make partially transparent selections, allowing for much more subtle blends between the AI-generated content and your original image. Previously, this kind of selection technique required some clever use of the quick mask mode to create partially transparent selections. Tony's little panel makes it all as easy as clicking a button. If I make a partially transparent selection of my image at something like 40%, Generative Fill will use more of the original content when blending in the AI-generated content, and the lower the percentage you use, the more of your original image will be used in the generative results. Of course, the higher the percentage you use, the more synthetic content will be generated. So here's an example where I've made a 40% selection by clicking the appropriate button in the little panel, and then I've asked Generative Fill to paint a watercolor for me. Notice how well it blends the original image into the generated content. Now let's do the same thing at a higher percentage value, like 65 or 70%. Notice how much more the generative content has taken over from the original image. So that's your quick explainer of the two new major features in Photoshop 25 and a few tips and tricks for working with them. If you want to learn the entire program from the ground up, I've got a live online Photoshop core skills class starting up October 9th, and it has been entirely updated to include the new features in Photoshop 25. Head over to jeffhirsch.com for full details. I'll also include a link in the notes below. For more Lightroom and Photoshop videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and go ahead and click the bell icon to get notified anytime I post a new video. And if you aren't already on my mailing list, head over to jeffhirsch.com and sign up for the mailing list and you'll get updates on my classes and workshops and trips, along with bonus tutorial videos and articles for Photoshop and Lightroom. I promise not to spam your inbox, and I will never, ever sell your address to a third party. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.